Father in heaven, we give you glory. We bless and worship you for a time like this in your presence again. Thank you for this privilege. Be thou exalted forever in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the life of these students. Thank you for your love over their lives. As we gather to learn this morning, Lord, we receive quick assimilation and retentive memory to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, last week we we talked briefly about, is it deep, brief, briefly? Yeah, I think we were able to do something reasonable. Uh, concerning the topic. Who can quickly remind us again? Yeah. Acid, base, and salt. Yeah, talked about acid, base, and salt. And then we we're able to talk ex extensively or try, we we're able to cover. Did we finish acid last week? Did we finish acid? We talked about acid. You know, the topic is acid, base, and salt. So we started with acid. So and I'm, I'm, I, I can't remember if, can you hear me? Sorry for that break in transmission. Um, it's network issue. So that's why I'm trying to get it fixed as I'm out here. As soon as this network is stable again, I'll go back inside, okay? So sorry for that. Um, so let me try and go back inside, I think. But can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. So let me just, yes, all right, thank you. Let me go back inside and uh, Accept. So, like I told you, sorry for that uh, break in transmission. Very sorry, and uh, it's network issue anyway. Please, who is with uh, Infinix Smart Three? The person is even putting my name, Infinix Smart Three. So it's my Infinix, it's my phone. Please, as soon as the person is done, let you should bring it back to me, okay? So if you are the one using Infinix Three. Smart 3, please put on your videos and change the device name to your name. David Ulebe, Kezaya Kantoma, Omar Chonu, please can you do us a favor and put on your videos quickly? Thank you. So, like I said, uh, as we were saying before the interruption of the network, I said we started with the, we, the topic is acid, base, and salt. So and I said, we looked at acid extensively in a way as for your level, because this topic now, the truth of the matter is, the last time I checked your, uh, as I was trying to go through your, your scheme, okay, trying to work on it based on uh, the past questions, I discovered that uh, the this particular topic we are treating now has actually been is not really talked much about okay in your exam i don't know why but we don't know what this year might be if they will it's most likely that they talk more about it but if they don't it's not a waste okay it's very important for those of you I'll be going to science class, very important for you. And for those of you that will not be going to science class, it's equally important for you because this is the elementary of uh, science. And it will be absurd or absurd for an individual in this country now to say, I don't know about technology, I don't know about science. Okay, science and technology, they are the one ruling the world now. So you need to get your food, at least, yeah, you need to have some dose 
of knowledge in science and technology. So it's still very important for you. But by the time you get to SS1, while you'll be separating or deviating go to your various classes, then they'll be talking in detail. The teacher that will be taking you chemistry will probably be talking to you in detail concerning this topic. But that notwithstanding, so what I want to look at this morning is very interesting. Like I told you earlier, we started with it last week, acid, base, and salt. So we talked about acid last week, though I will still do a recap, a very quick recap, before we go on this morning. Do a very quick recap. So then, by the grace of God, I will be sending the note to you also today. So by the grace of God, if time permits, we will finish base and salt today. I'm not doing much, like I told you, we will not be going to the deep, the detail, because this chemistry is wide, actually. So when you get to SS1, SS2, SS3, they will be teaching you acid, base, and salt until you leave secondary school. Okay? So as a way of, by way of introduction, that's what we are looking at. All right, let's go to the, the business of the day. Let's try to... Good. So I said last week, we looked at acid, base, and salt. And I said that uh, an acid uh, long been associated with sour taste. Okay? You remember, I know those of you, in case you have forgotten anything, as I will be rushing it through acid, because we are going to base and salt today. So I will not be dwelling much on acid. I hope the note was sent to you last week, right? Did you receive the note? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to Jesus. Yes, sir. is doing a great job. He's a great guy. My friend. I love him. So, we will be, like I told you, I will not be wasting much time. Since the note has been sent to you, so you should have been able to read through before now, okay, as regarding acid. So, I'll just be flipping through it very quickly so that you just remind us things that we learned last week. All right? So, I say acid is associated with sour taste. So when you put something in your mouth and you feel the taste sour, okay, it's, it has something to do with an acid content, all right? The acidity content. So that is all about this. Then quickly, the next one. So we define an acid as any substance which when dissolves in water, produce hydrogen ion or ozonium ion as the only positive ion, okay? As the only positive ion. So meaning when, when it dissolves in water, it forms or produces Hydrogen ion or ozonium ion. This is H3O plus. Then this is H plus. Okay, as the only positive ion. Let's go on. I'm the captain anyway. So by the time we get to ask to base, then we now start talking gently as a gentleman. So I said, looking at the classes of acid now. So there are two main classes of acid. Remember, classes of acid. I didn't say types of acid. There are two main classes of acids. And these are organic acids and inorganic acids. And what I was explaining the other time, of course, you know what an organic is. Organic is talking about nature, like raw, natural, crude from nature. Okay? Why inorganic is, is uh, synthetic in a way, man-made, produced or manufactured by man. So, so let's look at this quickly. Is it organic acid? These are also called natural acids because they occur in nature. So it could be found in plants or animals. And I think that was what we looked at last week. We looked at it in detail, critically, giving us some examples of uh, the, the acid that can be obtained from plants, the ones that can be obtained from animals, and the sources of such animals, the names, and where they are gotten from. All right? So then, I say most, most of the times, or majorly, organic acids are not harmful, all right? But in the case of inorganic acid, these are also called mineral acids because they are prepared by artificial means, all right, from some elements or minerals. So they are usually harmful to the body, especially when in concentrated form, right? Especially in concentrated form. And I gave you an assignment last week I gave you something to discuss or to read. So, and I promise that before today, before we go on today, we shall be looking at um, 
what I asked you to do. I gave you a, a, a homework kind of that you should go and look at what dilute acid is. And I believe by now some of you must have done it, or if not all of you, those of you that were in my class last week. So by the time I preview this topic quickly, this acid, then before I go into base, then I'll be asking you to tell me what a dilute acid is. So once some, one person sent the, his own assignment to me in my email, so I think I checked, but I can't remember the person's name now. But if I remember, I will let you know. All right, just one person. All right, so inorganic acid, like I told you, is present in the stomach, but in a diluted state, not in concentrated state. Too. You cannot keep concentrated acid in your stomach. You, by the time you try to throw up, you see your intestine coming out. You can't even throw up because it will melt your esophagus right from your neck down to melt it. And the person will just fall down and fall dead, dead fall dead, uh, fall down and die. And so, or drop dead. So it's, it's not possible. So it has to be in diluted state. So it will give you an idea that diluted state is not as bad as a concentrated state. Okay. So then quickly. So then I will mention some of the examples of inorganic acids. Some of the examples of inorganic acid, I say it includes hydrochloric acid. Okay, that's HCl. I told you the L is small letter, the H is big, the C is big, letter, capital letter, so, um, so to say. Then tetrahydrosulfate cis acid, which is H2SO4. I told you, I said, don't bug yourself, don't go yourself disturbed about this is 2 whatever. How it come, how it come about the name. You'll be taught when the time comes, okay? Then we talk about triazonitary 5 acid, HNO3. Like I told you, I said we are talking about some examples of inorganic acids. Then H3PO4, that's tetraosophosphate 5 acid. Okay, tetraosophosphate 5 acid. Then we talk about H2SO3, trioxosulfate 4 acid. Trioxosulfate. You see, look at the difference between H2SO4 and H2SO3 is the number. Look at it. This is 4, this is 3. So this is tri, and this one is tetra from uh, your Roman uh, numera or figure. This is Roman figure now. Uh -huh. Those are tetra, whatever. Di, two, tri, three, tetra, four, mono, one. Okay, that's where they coin all these things from. So let's go to the next one quickly. Then I gave you some table trying to explain trying to explain the organic acids now and their sources. Okay, trying to explain organic acid and their sources. So I gave you a tabular form, and exam this example in the tabular form, okay? Talking about, looking at the serial number, organic acid, the sources. So number one, now we have fatty acid. Fatty acids, of course, this one are organic, meaning they are from either plant or animal. So in, the, in, in fatty acid now, it's gotten from butter and margarine. I told you margarine, told you last week, okay? From uh, butter and margarine. For those of you that feed on butter, bread and butter, it has a good number of fat, quantity of fat in it, all right, and margarine. So talking about citric acid, I say citrus from orange, tangerine, lemon, lime, and grape, and so on and so forth. All right, amino acid from protein, okay? So meat and fish, for example. Oxalic acid, I say from vinegar. I think I remember telling you about production of cake. For those people that are into production of cake, I say they should know what a vinegar is. They use it in watching vegetables, even in eatery. I worked in Chicken Republic before. So we use it to wash our vegetables, to prepare our, yes, our vegetables, like all those um, cabbage. So just to, to wash them, just in little quantity. Then garlic acid, onion and garlic. That's where garlic acid is gotten from. Lactic acid, of course, from milk, okay? Then ascorbic acid, fruit and vegetables, like pumpkin, oranges, and mangoes. Palmitic acid, of course, this one should not be new to some of you. Palm oil, from palm fruit, okay? Palmitic, from palm. So we have, uh, what is it called again? Palm wine like I was trying to explain the other time. Then this is types of acid. It's different from classes of acid. I said there are terms, 
used in describing the different types of acids. The term include a strong acid, we have weak acid, we have concentrated acid, then we have dilute acid. So that was why I gave you the dilute acid because it was not explained in this place. So that's why I say you should try and then get the definition or the explanation on dilute acid before now. So I believe that some of you must have done it. And if you have not done it now, well, it's not good enough. Okay. So I say strong acid. This is an acid that can ionize completely into its ions. Example include H2SO4, HCl, hydrochloric acid, and triosonitrate 5. That's HNO3, HNO3, and so on and so forth. These are acids that can ionize completely. I say weak acid. These are, this is an acid that cannot or does not completely ionize into its ion. It's not that it's not ionizing, but it does not ionize completely. So when they say something is melting, but it's not melting completely, it melts, but it does not melt completely, all right? So you just have that picture, that idea in your mind when you hear the word ionizes, okay? It might have a deeper meaning, all right? But just for you to get it, okay, to have a good understanding or an idea of what I'm trying to, so you begin to imagine this in your mind. So example includes H2CO3, H2SO3, CH3, COH, then H3O4. So these are some of the examples of weak acid. Okay. That's some of the examples of weak acid. Yes, Solomon West, that's exactly what I'm saying. I say when they say something ionizes, I say you should be having it in mind like it's breaking into its component, its fragments. All right? Breaking into its fragments. Like when you say something ionizes, meaning it's, it, it breaks into its components. For example, if human being want to ionize, for example, human being does not ionize, but if, if I want to use that word, human being say, ah, oh boy, the guy ionizes when at the, at the explosion of the bomb, the boy ionizes completely, scattered into pieces. You see his body, or the hand, the nose, the teeth, the legs, so it breaks into his component. Just, so that, like that was what I was using, I used the ice block as an example last week. I think when he, when you, when you, when you see, when you hear what ionizes, just, might not be the perfect explanation for it, but once you have that in your mind, it will not be new to you, it will not be, you will not be lost in the explanation, all right? I said, um, when an ice, for example, when you put inside water, with time, it starts it to be melting, okay? When the water becomes cold and the ice is not completely melt, okay? So, or if you put an ice inside the very cold water, it takes a longer time to melt. Let's assume that, okay, it's melting, but at the point, maybe it gets a particular point, it refuses to melt completely, it just remain like that. So that could be likened to weak acid, all right? They, they, they ionize, but not completely. So looking at concentrated acid now, this is an acid that has a very small quantity of water in it, very little quantity of water in it, okay? I would ask clear now. And I say you should note something very important, very important, this is dangerous, this could be hazardous to one's health. When you go against this rule, never add water directly to concentrated acid. The hot acid solution may splatter onto your body or face and may cause serious burning. And may cause serious burning. Uh -huh. Just like sugar cube ionizes completely into hot water but does not, uh, oh, the Lord bless your memory, my great friend. That's a very good one there. Prince Rich, you're a great guy. I love you, man. So it's helping us here to use sugar, cube of sugar, for those of you that soak in the hostel, all right? When you put a cube of sugar inside hot pap, for example, with time, you will see it. But when you put in a cold pap, cold pap, put it inside. If case not taking, you will end up eating your sugar in the form of cube, all right? So that is exactly, that's a very perfect example. God bless you, great guy. Okay? So the hot acid solution may splatter onto your body or face and may cause serious burning. So always add acid to water. Okay? So like I told you, always add acid to water. Don't add water to acid. It's an insult to the personality of acid. So it will get angry and react on your face, on your body. 
I said there are two main properties of acid. They are physical properties. Yes, we didn't talk about yeah, uses of acid last week. I think that was where we stopped. We stopped that somewhere around here. The properties of acid. I think I remember now. So there are two main properties of acid. They are physical properties and chemical properties. Like I told you, trying to explain the right time. I say physical properties simply means when you look at something, what can you see? Physical appearance. Is it short? Is it tall? Is it fat? Is it slim? Okay. You can't just see me for the first time and know if I talk too much. You can't. When you just see me, if you see me, if I'm not talking, you can't use that one to judge me. Or if, you are, if, I, if, I, if, I, if somebody's now asking you, describe Mr. Smart. Now I say, ah, that guy talks too much. In fact, he used to insult people. In fact, he used to do this, he used to do that. You can't, do, you can't get that by just looking at me. So if you take time, before you know whether I talk too much or not. Go out to Keziah. Keziah, tell your siblings to be quiet, please. Or you mute your device. Thank you. So that's what physical property. So when you look, when you are given an acid, even if you don't know that it's an acid, how, what will you say about it? You can judge by the color. You can judge by the smell. Okay? If you taste it, you will know whether it is sour or not sour. You understand? But chemical properties has to do with, you have to go deeper. You have to play with that acid to know whether this thing can burn or cannot. You have to know whether if you pour it inside Gary, whether the Gary will turn to pap or not. So that's chemical properties. You are trying to work on that thing to know something that is beyond the physical. So, so physical, as the word implies, physical. Chemical, it goes down, deep down, beyond physical. You have to dig down before you can know the chemical properties. All right, so that's why we quickly have this explanation as regarding physical properties of an acid. It's a strong acid turn blue litmus paper red. Because it's physical, it's obvious. When you see, when you put it, you will know. Why weak acid turn blue litmus paper pink? So part of the physical properties of acid, they have a sour taste. Once you put your hand, oh, this thing is sour. Okay. They are corrosive to the skin. When they touch your skin, they react with your skin. They say, oh, oh boy, oh, this thing no be smart, you know. I can't be playing with this thing. This thing can get me injured. Especially the corrosive, the concentrated acid. Now we even, in fact, it will eat your skin. Okay, that one is dangerous. Now, looking at the chemical properties of acid now. You see the chemical properties, you see a lot of things that we display here on the screen. Let me quickly correct this. I should have done that last week. This is small letter L. Okay, so you can correct that in the note you have with you. Small letter L. So please, anyway, you see capital letter L here. Please correct that. It should be small letter, all right? It should be small letter. All right. <clears throat> so you see, acid reacts with calcium triazocarbonate 4, that is CaCO3, to liberate carbon 4 oxide. So this is, look at it. This is calcium triazocarbonate 4, uh, 4. Then this is ACA, this is an acid. Okay, when acid reacts with this thing, it will give you, it will produce calcium chloride plus water. Then carbon four oxide, that is, carbon four oxide will now be liberated in form of gas. This is a gas now, carbon four oxide is a gas. So the CO2 can turn lime water milky. So when you pass this CO2 gas, okay, when you pass this CO2 gas on a lime water, what you see is as if you are producing milk, do not make oh, but it will turn the milk, the lime water, it will turn it milky, make it look milky. So that is where you will know that, okay, this is CO2, all right? Then another property, the chemical properties of acid is acid reacts with some metal like zinc, magnesium, and so on to produce hydrogen. That's hydrogen gas, okay? That hydrogen gas is a colorless gas which gives a pop sound when ignited. So when you put it in a, in a glowing splint, meaning after you strike a matches and you blow off the flame, that red splint, that glowing splint, when you put it in, a, in an environment where there's hydrogen gas, okay, you hear the sound. Pop sound, pop, pop. So you see, if you now begin to accumulate this in, in a bigger form, you can, you can use it for, Bomb, explosive. Boom. You get it now. So this is zinc. Zinc 
ZN, this is an acid HCl. When they when you add the two of them together, they will give you this. So if you begin to imagine how do they do, how do you go about it to get this, we will teach you when we get to that place. That's balancing of equation, chemical equation. All right? I will teach you that if time permits by the grace of God. If you have not resumed, but we pray that you resume so that we can do it in person. All right, together with you. So the, the third one now say acid reacts with a base or alkali to form salt and water only. You have to put only salt and water only. This reaction is also called neutralization reaction. So this is an acid. This is a base. When they come together, husband and wife, when they marry, they give birth to these children. This is salt. This is the same salt used for cooking at home. So they don't write NaCl plus water. All right, this is H2. You know this is water. This is popularly known. So this is what happened in chemical properties of acid. It's not limited to this though, but these are some of the just few out of many properties of chemical properties of an acid. Now, this is where we are supposed to start today. When we have spent so much time, I trust God that we will be able to finish base today because I don't want to rush you guys with this so that you know just so that it will not be like a, a story that you that, that can be quickly forgotten. All right. So now looking at the use of acid, the following are some uses of acid, some, not all. It's not limited to this, all right? Some acids, number one says some acid are used as drugs or as food supplements, e.g. folic acid and ascorbic acid. You remember ascorbic acid, right? But I may see when we're talking about organic acid, okay? Then folic acid for pregnant women, they give them folic acid. If your elder sister or your aunt is pregnant and you see them taking folic acid, uh, don't be too surprised. That's what they do. They give them, it helps them a lot. All right. So, amino acid is used by the human body to form protein. Like I told you, amino, amino protein, all right, by human body to form protein. So, which help in the repair of one out tissues. So, one of the importance of proteins in the body is it helps you to repair one out tissues. All right. For example, if you have a wound on your skin, it's a result of protein that will help you to facilitate the healing. So if you don't have sufficient protein in your system, it might linger. All right. So protein is very important. Okay. So that's some good work it does in the body. So excess of it is not good. So you don't have just have it in a good quantity, in a nice proportion. Okay, acid like H2SO4 are used in the manufacture of fertilizers. In lead acid, also in lead acid accumulator and in oil refineries. So this is what we can use some acid for. Those not limited to this. I think I see have some example in the next slide. So then acid like HNO3 are used in the manufacture of explosive. I've said that earlier. Explosive bomb. Boa. So you don't joke with. If you see a company that works with acid, in fact, there was one time I learned about a company in America that, that they experienced this explosion, acid explosion. Boo, and it kills several people. Okay, people. So that thing can be very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. So that's why when you work in a, in a company like that, you must have, you must put on a protective uh, jacket. All right. So at least if you splash on your body, you won't be burnt. So work in work in a lab. So it can be very terrible. So you have to be very careful. Scientists, they are wonderful sort of people. They 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 they, 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 they you see them with strange acts. All right. So tartaric acid, that's from grape, like we said last time. Okay. It's used in making baking soda, salt drinks. And even oral salt, that's health salt. Okay, health salt. So you see, it's very important. So this part of the uses. There are another uses is citric acid, like boric acid, are used in making mild antiseptics or germicides. Like this boric, boric acid now, boric, boric acid is used for, for germicide. For example, like usual lotion. There's a drug, there's a chem, there's a drug they, they, they call isolation. Okay, for example, if an individual has a wound on his or any part of the body, and going to the hospital for dressing or to any nearby clinic, 
they use this boric acid, okay? Boric acid as part of the components of this germicide. It's not the only germ is the, uh, uh, the ingredients. For example, like in the production of resolution, now we use uh, boric acid and chlorinated lime or something like that. So for the production of this, okay, some of these germicides. So they use it to cure as an antiseptic, okay, to prevent um, bacteria infections developing around the wounds. All right. Then fatty acid are used in the manufacture of soaps. Ethanoic acid is used in, preser in, preser in preservation of food. Okay, like ethanol, sometimes they use it as preservative in drugs. Most of these drugs, all the syrup, vitamin C syrup, paracetamol syrup for children, is part of the company, is, is used as a preservative, all right, for food and some other things. All right, let's go on. So thank you for listening. That's for the end of the last week. So looking at today, base, base, need to be a bit fast most of our time a base i say okay permit somebody telling us that palmitic acid can also be used for cooking and making creams yes of course like palm oil okay oil palm oil i know palm oil is used for making soap i know that uh, Yes, you can equally use it for making cream. You understand? In fact, those days in the village, sometimes if you run out of cream, body cream, we use palm oil to rub our bodies. And it's function, it serves. Okay, it serves very well. So that's a very good one there, brother. Thank you so much. So a base is a substance. I want you to be likely or relating the definition of base now with the definition of acid. They're like husband and wife. But opposite in their character. So bring them together, you'll be able to, to manage the two of them together. So a base is a substance which when dissolves in water produces hydrozyl ion, OH minus, as the only negative ion. Remember, we say definition of acid, and acid is any substance which when dissolves in water, we okay, form hydrogen ion and ozonium ion as the only positive ion. I hope you can get me now. But in the case of base, yeah, Christopher, what can I do for you? Christopher, I can see you raising your, your hand up now. Yeah, was it a mistake? Is that? It was a mistake. Oh, glory to Jesus. Thank you for that. So, Fume, please, can you stop or mute your device? Noise is coming from the background, from your place. Fume, thank you. So, so like I told you, I said, sorry for that distraction. A base is a substance which, when dissolves in water, produces hydrozyl ion. Hydrogen ion is different from hydrozyl ion. See, hydrogen ion is H+. plus. That's why we say as the only positive ion. This one is OH, negative. OH minus as the only negative ion. And let's go on. So now look at it now. Base are most times regarded as the opposite of acid. Base are most times regarded as the opposite of acid. Now begin to imagine it. Acid is a substance which when it dissolves in water, form hydrogen ion or ozonium ion as the only positive ion. Then coming to base, base is any substance which when dissolved in water, form hydrozyl ion as the only negative ion. You see, they are like what and opposite. One is forming positive, the other one is forming negative. Excuse me. So studies have shown that not all the bases are soluble in water. You see? So this base now, research has made us to understand that it is not all of them that are soluble in water. Some are very soluble. The difference between very soluble and sparingly or partially soluble, while others are insoluble in water. You see, they are like in three categories now. One is completely soluble, very soluble. Okay, very, very soluble in water. Some they are sparingly, sparingly or partially. Just like when we talk about weak acid the other time. So it does not ionize completely. Okay, so it's not complete 
ionization. So probably this one too is partially soluble. Why some others are insoluble in water? Many of those ones, they are like the best of one. Most people, they don't get soluble. They don't dissolve. They, don't, they are not soluble in water. No, the soluble, soluble to be soluble. When the something is soluble, meaning it dissolves completely. Okay. This has led to the discovery of alkali. So what led us to the discovery of alkali is, is whether it dissolves or it does not dissolve completely or partially or not at all. Now, when you look at an alkali, an alkali is a base. But what kind of base? The kind of base that is soluble in water. So when I tell you that a base that is soluble in water, what should come to your mind? Okay. Alkali, God bless you. So alkali is soluble in water. All right, it's soluble in water. So some of the examples of alkali include sodium hydroxide. So if you remember, this is NaOH, it's called sodium hydroxide. Remember I said, as negative, I, the only, I, uh, what, do I, what do I say again? I say hydroxide ion as the only negative ion. When you look at this now, you see OH here. You see OH here. Okay? So you will discover that this one in the spiritual realm. Okay? In the spiritual realm. Are you all paying attention now? In the spiritual, this is physical realm now. Looking at them. You can say, okay, I'm seeing NaOH. I'm seeing KOH. Let's assume that this is physical properties. This is what you can see with your naked eye. But there's something that is going on inside this thing that you cannot see with your naked eye. Here, here like this. And part of it is minus. There's minus here. Just like when they are teaching you mathematics. And they are telling you that A or X is a variable. Okay? And they do not write anything in front of X. So if they do not write anything in front of X, what is the value of X? The value of what is the coefficient of X? Positive. Positive? What does it connote? What is the value? What is the coefficient of X? If I say what is the coefficient of X? One. One. God bless you. Because one is not written, does that mean that one is not there? No. So that's the same thing with this thing. It's carrying this one. This is positive. This one is carrying plus. This one is carrying minus. In the spiritual realm. But I can see it because I have spiritual eye. Some of you that don't have your spiritual eye. You will not be able to see, say, what is Mr. Smart saying? Don't worry, take your time. All right, by the time you get to senior class, for those of you that will going into science detail, they'll be telling you all these things. So this one, they say, some of the examples include NaOH and KOH. This is sodium hydroxide, this is potassium hydroxide. So this is, this is calcium hydroxide. All right, and this is ammonia, aqueous ammonia, that is hydrated ammonia. All right, this is aqueous ammonia. Aqueous simply means aqueous from the world water. Aqua, aquatic, aqueous, water. Anywhere you hear aqueous ammonia, meaning ammonia that has water in it. <laughs> you get it now. So these are these are weak alkalis. This one, uh, they are weak, they are especially this particular one. They are weak alkali, which are sparingly soluble in water. What did I say the meaning of sparingly is the other time again? Partially. Partially, the Lord bless your memory all. Thank you. That's a very brilliant one from you there. So now we have insoluble basic hydroxide, which cannot dissolve in water. You see, we are talking about some of these things. In, in, insoluble, insoluble simply means it cannot be soluble. It cannot dissolve completely. All right? And, and some, some is even cannot dissolve at all. Like this is insoluble now. It can't dissolve at all. All right, let's go on. Then looking at types of base. Types of base. All right. There are two main types of base. And these are we have strong base, just like we have strong acid. You remember? Then we have weak base. Okay. Then we have weak base. It's not charges. Then we have weak base. Let's check in. So, we have strong, as strong base and weak base. Now, let's look at them. Strong base. This is a base that completely ionizes to release 
the OH. You see, it will release this OH. Now, we are going deeper. This OH, somebody will say, what is he doing? What is he ionizing? I told you the other time, I said, in order for you to get a picture of something like we call ionizes, to say something ionized, like uh, uh, King Solomon asked the other time, what is ionized? So, in a layman way, I just want to give you in the simplest form that you will never forget again. When is something ionized? Maybe if, I, if, if, you, if you have uh, building blocks, for example, and you build a car, very beautiful car with it, and I get the, I just dismantle it into the components. The, what you use to make the car, I dismantle it. I didn't spoil it. You can still recouple it. Do you understand? I didn't damage it. I, all I did was to dismantle it. So you can copy it back if you know the way you made it. So now this is NaOH. When it ionizes, it breaks. So this is Na plus this thing that you cannot see with your naked eye here. You can see this. You are you, looking into it with your spiritual eye. All right. Even if your eye is closed, if somebody is asking you, remember, if, if I write NaOH down in a sheet of paper, and your eye is closed, and you didn't know what I've written in the paper, if I ask what did I write, you will tell me you don't know. Why? Because your eye is closed or was closed. So, but if you open your eye, what you can see is NaOH. If I now ask you and say, okay, Christabel, this NaOH, if it ionizes, what will it give you? Even if you have your eye closed, you begin to see with your spiritual eye, with your inner mind, with your mind, with your imagination. You begin to say, okay, it will ionize into Na plus plus OH minus. Do you get it now? So this is the spiritual realm, and this is the physical realm. This is the spiritual realm. So these are the things you need to know with time, all right? So this is called sodium hydroxide. Examples are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. As it happens in sodium hydroxide, so also it happens in potassium hydroxide. Look at potassium KOH, for example. When it breaks into its components, that is ionizes, it will give you K plus and OH minus, like I told you. Okay, this one will always stand alone, OH minus. When you are talking about the ion in, in the ion in the ionized states, in its ion, this is ion. Okay, this is what we call sodium ion. This is what we call hydroxyl ion. This is what we call potassium ion. And this is what we call hydroxyl ion. You see, hydroxyl ion here, hydroxyl ion here. So if I break this one too now, this CaOH, look at it. Once I, when I break it, this is Ca2 plus. This is OH ion. OH is still reflecting here. So, so what I'm seeing there is a strong base. This is a base that completely ionizes to release the hydroxyl. That is the OH. Example are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. So when I ask you for strong base, for example, you can give me the example of sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. All right? Now, look at our weak base now. This is a base that does not completely ionize in water to release. It does not completely ionize in water to release OH minus. An example is calcium hydroxide. That is Ca. Look at OH in bracket two. Okay, subscript two. Then look at what it will give us when it ionizes. Look at this two here. So meaning it's not standing alone. That will meaning we have two of this. And if it must stand alone, it has to be one to com for complete ionization. Are you getting it now? So since this one is carrying two in front of it, then it's showing us that it does not ionize completely. Are you getting it now? Uh, let's go on. Then looking at properties of base. Just like acid has physical and chemical properties. The same thing is applicable to base here. Base has its physical properties and also has its chemical properties. And I know by now you understand what I mean by chemical properties and physical properties. Like I told you, I said as the name implies physical, something you can see from the outward apparel. Does it have color? Do you know that when you keep base and water side by side, 
an acid in a transparent container, in a glass, for example, a transparent glass, a cup, glass cup, do you know that you might not know that if they ask you to pick water and drink, and you have one, <laughs> and you just have one choice to make, just pick once, you can't choose twice. The truth of the matter is your hand will be shaking like this. And if they tell you that one of it contains acid, strong acid, concentrated acid, one glass contains water, another glass contains base, your life is in your hand. Pick one and drink. Huh. I think some will stand up and say, oh God, I don't want to play game with my life. Some will say, okay, if I die, I die. Some will say, oh boy, you taste first after you. That's a wise person now. Tell you, okay, you pick first. If you pick one, I'll pick. All right. So you might not be able to differentiate. How do you differentiate them? You have to go deeper. You have to bring this most paper and put inside all of them, <laughs> one after the other. By the time this one from blue change to red, you say, oh, I think this is acid. From red it changed to from red it changed to blue. You say, oh, I think <laughs> this is this is base. When you put water and it is neutral, it didn't change to red, it didn't change to blue. You say, okay, I will drink, let me drink this one. I, I think I like this one. That is when you can completely conclude that this is the one you will take. But before then, bros, I want to encourage you, please don't play that kind of game, eh? it's dangerous. So we have physical properties and chemical properties. So in the physical properties of base now, concentrated base are corrosive. They are corrosive. So meaning, when you pour them on something, you will see the reaction. You will see it physically. You will see the reaction. When you pour acid on a table, concentrated acid on a table, you will see the way it's reacting. It will be foaming, like angry, like I will eat you up. Why did you pour me here? I will eat you up. It will be <laughs> acid can be very terrible. You will see practically eating those things up. You see this liquid, how bad this liquid can be. Okay. It is when you get to your skin, that's when you know how bad it can act. So, but I know you won't go to that length of uh, using the rub cream or using mass cream on your body. Except if you want to turn to a macho, macho, you know it's fair in complexion. So if you are dark in complexion like me, say you want to, I want to look beautiful, I want to look like things a blessing, I want to look like a macho, no, fair in complexion. You're going to pour acid on your body. Your own fairness will not be right. It will not be even be smooth. It will be the very dirty one. In fact, black, burnt, red. That's what you have. So, concentrated bases are corrosive. The second one says, they turn red litmus paper blue. So if I put base and acid in front of you, I say, which one is acid, which one is base? Don't argue. Just say, can I have a litmus paper, please? Say, all right. Here is it. Here you go. By the time you put it, anyone that turns red litmus paper blue is a base. Say, this is my base, sir. Then what do you call this? Say, I don't know yet. You have to see test. Because don't be surprised, the two containers might be base. I said, if you are told that, okay, one is base, one is an acid. That's when you can ju judge immediately. So they are slippery or soapy to touch. When you touch base, for example, now, it's soapy in the hand, it's soapy. Okay, it's soapy, it's slippery. Unlike the acid, now when you taste it, it's sour in taste, all right? Then, it, unlike acid, base, they are bitter, they have bitter taste, right? They have bitter taste. So then chemical properties, of course, this one goes beyond physical eye. That's why we call it chemical. Base reacts with acid. They neutralize acidic solutions to form salt and water only. Now, there was a time I was going through your last word, and I double into this question that says, the reaction between acid and base. What do you call the reaction between acid and base? What do you call the reaction? It's simply called neutralization reaction simple sometimes they will ask you what is neutralization reaction neutralization reaction you know they are twisting the question they are turning it upside down i say if they ask you the reaction between acid and base is called what it's called neutralization reaction and if they ask you what is neutralization reaction you say is the reaction between acid and base to form salt and water only like i told you if you remember NaOH is an example of strong base, right? So plus HCl. If two of these reacting, what they will give birth to? They will give birth to salt. This is salt. 
and this is water. Only, this is, they can't give it to any other thing. If acid and base react, the only thing they will produce, they will give you, is salt and water. So if anybody asks you, even waking you up from the dream, and say, if I ask acid and base together, what will it give me? Even if you don't know the kind of base it will give you, because the kind of base it will give you depends on the kind of base or the kind of acid you use. Is that taken now? So just tell the person, even without knowing the kind of base the person is working with, whether it's working with, working with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, just know that, okay, it's going to give me salt and water. As simple as that. Only, that's the only thing to give you. Water must be involved. And if the, so if the option says salt only, water only, salt and water, then you know that the answer is salt and water only. Bases react with ammonium salts to liberate ammonium gas. How many of you have ever been to where uh, this, this Muslim people, where they used to urinate if they want to pray? If you have ever passed through that kind of place before, how does it smell? Terrible, choking smell. Or if you have ever been to people where they live in the or public toilet that they don't really wash regularly like that. That's choking smell. The way it smells, that's how, that is how ammonia gas to smell. It's choking. This NH3, look at it there, NH3. It's an ammonia gas. Okay, that's how it smells. Choking. Okay? So bays react with ammonium salt now to liberate ammonia gas. This is a major characteristic of base or ammonium salt. This is a, this is a base, Na. OH, sodium hydroxide, with uh, ammonium chloride. NH4 is an ammonium. Then CA is chlorine, that's chloride. Ammonium chloride. So when it react with base, it will give us sodium chloride, which is salt. It will give us water, and it will give us something else. This is ammonia gas. This one comes in form of gas. Okay, it comes in form of gas. So you see that this is not a reaction between base and water, uh, acid. This is a reaction between base and ammonium salt. That's why it's not giving us only salt and water. It's adding something else to it. All right? So please, my time is up. All right? We couldn't finish it. Like I told you, I don't want to rush you because this thing is very interesting. And if you miss out one step, you miss out others. So the notes will still be forwarded to you. This base and salt. We still talk about salt, right? Okay? So, but in this note that I'll be forwarding to you today, my great friend, Mr. Judugu, will help me and forward this very note to you. This particular base and sort, all right, to you. And please, before our next class, I want you to marry it, go through it, read it, and digest it. So, in line with this note that will be sent to you, okay, there is an evaluation. Let me quickly go to that evaluation. Let me quickly go to that place now. So, I want you to answer the question based on what you have read. Okay, where you are also read. Evaluation. So these are some questions that you evaluate yourself with. After you must have read the notes, going through the notes, close the notes, cover it. Okay. Look at this question and answer it genuinely, genuinely, so that by the time we come to next class, by the time we are finishing this topic, it's acid base and salt. I will throw these questions to you, and I will expect you to give me a response. So thank you for listening. The Lord bless you. Be good. Uh, you said you asked for what dilute acid and it uses it. Yes, what is dilute acid? Uh, what, what, what is it? My time is up. I don't want them to cut me off, please. Who can quickly tell us what dilute acid is? How many of you did it? Chris Abek, can you do it? Yes, sir. Okay, can I, can, I, can I see your hands of all of you that if you did it, what is dilute acid? If you know what dilute acid is, let me see your hands up. Okay, Solomon, thank you. Rich, yes, Arison, blessing as you. Philemon and Simeon, did you do it? Mesoi, God bless you. Kezai Akantoma is your fan that I'm seeing. I'm not seeing your fan is raising up a hand or what? Presuzo, thank you. Bretman, you didn't do it. Deborah Lawa, Jerry, my friend, you didn't do it. Please, not too good. So, quickly, um, Solomon, can you tell us what you discover in your own? What is your, what is dilute acid? Mm. Sir, a yes. dilute acid is the concentration of water mixed in an acid is higher than the concentration of the acid itself. Oh. For instance, five. Okay, continue, continue, continue. For instance, five percent 
sulfuric acid is a dilute acid. You are a great guy. The Lord will bless your memory in Jesus' name. See, this is a very brilliant one there. Very brilliant one. So when the concentration of water is more than the acid content, is diluted. So meaning dilute acid, I'm not encouraging you to drink it. But if paradvento, it pours on your skin, you can just smile and say, ah, yes, now, nah. so it's just diluted. But if concentrated is pour on your body, you will smile. Even if you are trying to smile, smile will disappear. If I say, <laughs> you see tears coming out because it's not funny. Okay? So thank you so very much, brother. God bless you. Do have a good day. My time is up there. Judy is stopping me here. Thank you. Do have a good day. God bless you.